thanks for joining us this morning. Um, this morning we're looking at covering defending devices and safeguarding your business. With myself this morning, my name's Lee Thatcher. I'm part of the new business development team here at Tech Tech. I have Simon. Hello. And Amy. Hello. Simon will be leading us through the, the webinar this morning. I am conscious that obviously it's everyone's lunchtime, so we will try and rattle through quite quickly. Um, Simon, over to you. Right, thank you, Lee. Um, yeah, so as we know, this, this kind of webinar's uh, titled Defending Devices. Um, we want to have a look at a specific application, which is called EMS. Um, so, but, but before we do that, I just want to look at how... Just to put in here, Simon, and sorry, that stands for Enterprise Mobility Suite. It's part of the new Microsoft product line um, with security at the forefront. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. So if we look on the slide at the moment, that kind of breaks into three areas. So one thing it really points out is the amount of devices that we're now using in the workplace. So I mean, some of these figures are a little bit old, but over 50% of us are using more than three devices, or three devices at least at work. Um, I think we can all sympathise with that one. Yeah, I was going to say, we're all, whether it's a laptop, tablet, mobile phone, we're, we're pretty much using all of those across the workplace now. Um, also, we're using multiple operating systems as well. Now, whether that's on uh, perhaps your laptop, where you might have a specific OS, Windows 7, Windows 10, it might be on your devices that you've got a multitude of Androids, iOSs, um, Blackberries, whatever the case may be. Also the number of applications that we're using as well. So as you see, 80% of employees are using non-approved software. Now that is a very kind of random statement in many cases. What this is really focusing on is how much are we aware of what applications are being used in the workplace. You might be thinking, well, yes, Facebook's used, but do you know it? Are you controlling it? And that's what we're referring to here. So what EMS is kind of giving us a solution is how we kind of control and some, remove some of these pains we have with these issues. Where I want to start is what's called mo uh, mobile device management. So within the EMS, this is one area that is covered in this, and it, you might have come across the term Intune. Um, which is the, this particular element of EMS. So whether it's a phone, tablet, a laptop, um, the most important thing about those is not the device themselves, but the data that's on those devices. Um, I'll give you an example recently of a situation my friend had. He, he literally, very innocently, misplaced his, his tablet. He left it on the train. Now that device, it was £150. Not overly bothered by the cost of that. However, the data that was on there, um, there were personal photographs, but there was also things like emails with sensitive detail, uh, sensitive information on there. In this particular case, they would got mobile device management. So what actually happened is, as soon as he could, he made a call to the management team who control this, and they completely wiped that device. So someone may have got their hands on that device, but the data, the content on there, they weren't able to touch, and that's the most important bit. Um, if we if we look specifically um, in terms of on device themselves, a few years ago, BlackBerry very much sold themselves on security. Yes, we can wipe your device as soon as you contact us. That's no longer the case where it's BlackBerry on their own. You know, whether it's iOS, Android, EMS gives this facility, and we can do this on all devices and all OSs. So it doesn't matter if it's Android, Windows, Microsoft have created a product that's truly universal across the market. That's right. Yeah. What's also worth pointing out about this as well is, um, and, and as a business, we're no different. Some people have a personal phone that they also use for work. Some people have a work phone that they also use for personal. And some people have one of each. Um, is this the bring your own device adoption? That's right, Lee. Um, so how we control that, again, can be very different. From a, from a business phone, you might think, right, well, the whole device should be wiped. Um, I, uh, sorry, some, some of the colleagues have got a personal phone, but they still retrieve their work emails on there. So it can be, locked, can be kind of set up so only one app or a couple of apps can be wiped, if that's the case. So it could be split how you want it. But. So just to break that down, if it's a business device, we could wipe the whole device, Correct. part of it. But this personal device, as long as they adopt our terms, then we could 
potentially just wipe single applications or business critical applications. That's right, yeah. So it can be selective on it essentially. Brilliant. So that's a, a big part of EMS, but it is one of four areas that we're going to have a look at, so that's mobile device management. The other area that I'd like to look at, uh, again, this slide at the moment is uh, something called Azure Active Directory. Um, I know some of you will be technical, some of you won't be here. So um, for the, for the non-technical Active Directory, it's purely the way that it recognises when we log on to our our uh, devices, if you like, how it recognizes us on the network. Okay. Um, pre things such as EMS, uh, there'd be a case where if we wanted to get onto a specific application, we'd have to log on again, and it might be a different set of uh, login criteria, which is quite frustrating having to remember lots and lots of usernames, passwords, etc. Um, what does your Active Directory allow us to do? is actually control applications so once you log on to your PC you then don't have to log on again to those particular applications. So just to add to this, it's a cloud-based product so whether you're logging in from home or whether you're logging in inside the business you're still going to have the same rights. What the other side of this is is disabling access as well. Um, again I was talking to someone um, and they had somebody who was managing their LinkedIn so it was a business LinkedIn page. Someone was controlling the content of that. It didn't, they didn't have EMS, so they had a, a username that was specific to the people that was looking after this. And that person moved on to another business. Um, one danger of that is that that user, even though they weren't employed by that business, was still able to get onto their LinkedIn account, LinkedIn account and control it. Um, the second side of it, is nobody else could actually get to that content because they didn't have the user details. They had to actually start their LinkedIn site from scratch again. With the benefit of the Azure Active Directory, because it's about that single sign-on, about that user logging in, what they may have had is a few people who do have access to LinkedIn, for example, and all it is is their normal login details. The person that left, we can just wipe that from AD. The other benefit with single sign-on is that I'm sure we all find it frustrating when you come in in the morning, you have to log into your Facebook, your Twitter, your LinkedIn, as well as logging onto your laptop, 10, 15 minute wait whilst you're uh, trying to get everything up and running. The joys of uh, the AD Premium product that Sam's talking about is that you log in once. Once you're signed on, you're signed on to all of your applications in one foul suite. Okay, excellent. Okay, so yeah, that is your Active Directory. And again, we are very touching on these very, very quickly. I know time is precious uh, with you guys today. Um, the next thing I'd like to look at is the protecting of information. Again, this can be a real pain point for, for organisations. It's so easy to create an email, send an email, and it goes out the door. And we don't really give a lot of thought what can happen to it next. Um, I probably shouldn't say this out loud, but sometimes I will just go in and the email comes in and I'll print it out because it's easy to look at. Um, obviously, if that's sensitive information, I shouldn't really be able to print it out and make it a bit more of a public affair. My desk is a little bit too public at times. Yeah, very much so. Um, so what um, EMS again allows you to do is have some called confidentiality level so when you are sending emails, you're able to add uh, confidentiality to an email. You don't have to um, add it across the board. So it may be that you are sending an email about, uh, let's say, pay rises, if you wish, yeah. um, or certain sensitive information. And I need to send that email to somebody. And I don't want to prevent that level of communication still. Um, however, it's what happens to it next. So by adding confidentiality, it prevents the email from, first of all, being printed, from being edited, from being hoarded. Essentially, all that that person can do is view that email. I'm sure we've all been in a situation where we might have forwarded an email to the wrong person by accident. Again, that can be dangerous if it's in the wrong hands when it's sensitive information. So again, this just has a little bit of a control on there when it can be um, confidential information. And all emails go out through EMS. Um, that they're already encrypted. So the whole data loss prevention issue is being covered very, very nicely 
as Simon's already said, a very low value application. Okay. The final area that I want to look at is, is breach alerts. Um, external hacking, it's it's a massive business. Um, some of you may have even listened to our webinars on cybercrime in the last uh, couple of weeks. If you're not, they are on the website. Please feel free to go and have a look. All pre-recorded. That's it. And I think we've actually got another webinar coming in a couple of weeks as well. Nice. Yeah. So I'm not going to talk about cybercrime in this particular case. I'll leave that to a separate occasion. Um, what we're really talking about is that EMS has something in there called Advanced Threat Analytics. Sounds great. Um, essentially, the way that this works is it's, pr it's trying to look at usual or unusual behavior on your network, essentially. Um, perhaps a good example where you may have experienced evidence of this is, is banks have been using this for some time now. Um, I know I've had a call from the bank asking me, are you in Hawaii currently? Um, unfortunately, I was probably in Stower Bridge or somewhere. Um, and suddenly the bank will say, well, there's been a request from your account for a thousand pounds or something like that. Obviously, they recognize unusual behavior on, on the account. And that's exactly the way that advanced threat analytics works. If there's unusual behavior, behavior on your network, then it will detect that and, and flag it up so we can prevent any undue activity. Brilliant. Anything to add to that, Lee? It's the worrying thing for us these days is that, especially with the adoption of bring your own device, um, what are our users getting up to in their spare time? What are they looking at? What are they doing? You know, the last thing any business owner or IT manager or anyone high in a business wants is the scenario where you have the police knocking on your door for using illegal torrents. But these days, it's so easy to access via a mobile phone. With advanced threat analytics, you can actually watch this and monitor this live as it's happening and control it. If you want to knock that person off, you can do that. A lot of people have said to us previously, well, is this big brother watching? No, I, I think this is taking it to the next level and protecting the businesses that we work in. Okay, excellent. So the, the four areas that I've kind of touched on there, mobile device manager, um, Azure Active Directory, the protecting of information in terms of that confidentiality part, and also the, the advanced threat analytics. Um, you know, I've referenced things like banks using advanced threat analytics. You know, I, I wouldn't like to know what money they've spent on that, but I'm sure it's a very serious amount um, of cash, if you like. If we look at mobile device manager, you know, I know a few years ago um, we were looking at it, and, and the costs were uh, again a serious amount of money. I think the nice thing that EMS is now wrapping this whole solution at, at a sensible price. You know, for ju just over a five or a month per user, you can cover the user's five, up to five devices on there. It, it's a sensibly pitched product now. It's prevalent these days, especially with cybercrime being the way that it is. As we all know, robbers don't go and rob banks anymore. They would rather use the internet and, and still through people through cybercrime. Having the packages there to protect us, I think, a, 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 uh, a necessary need these days and that final slide that I'm going to touch on here you know does productivity mean losing security because essentially if we go perhaps we're looking at mobile device areas we do want our workforce to be more productive so being able to do stuff either when they're on the road like they've just finished a meeting or they're in a meeting or they're at home we want to give that available available to be more productive and also as individuals it's nice to be more productive suddenly you know time in life intervenes and you want that flexibility uh, it does mean working at 11 o'clock at night sometimes um, and it's that flexibility so we want to be mobile but the important thing is that we don't lose our security on that and, and that really is what EMS is tackling here has anyone got any questions for us um, this, there is an area, sorry, we should have pointed this out, there is an area on your um, chat area, I need you want to explain where they can put questions. So there is a chat 
box just underneath where it'll say audience in the two days and you can just pop your um, questions in there if you like and we'll answer them straight away. Um, what I'll do now is I'll just mute us for a few um, moments just while if you want to think of any questions at all. So we'll see you in a few moments. Okay, great. So to answer one of the questions that we have had, um, the Enterprise Mobility Suite does include your antivirus software. Um, and another part of the package, which we haven't picked upon, um, is actually includes user cows. Um, so the package in, in, in full, as well as the, the, the products that Simon spoke about, it will come with local AV either on the device, mobile, laptop, tablet, and the user cow so you can, can connect to exchange. Does it come with, if I've a user and I've got five devices, and I had all of these on, for that's a user cow on, so we can have it on all devices for that yes. cost. For that one individual user. Any other questions, folks? Not that we can see. So, if you'd like to wrap up, Simon, maybe? Yeah, I think I'd just like to say um, thank you very much for taking your time. I appreciate it. Busy. Everyone's busy. Um, you know, I know most of you know Akitech, um, but if you do have any questions, you know, whether you want to contact Amy, me, or myself, um, more than happy feel to, free to do so. Yeah, and, and we will help in whatever way we can. Uh, and thank you very much. Thank you. Cheers. Bye bye.